A few weeks ago, I switched out my Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra for Samsung's newest folding phones, the Z Fold 6 and the Z Flip 6. And cards on the table, I got some talk, bones to pick. Let's so, starting talk with about folding phones just for a moment. I've never understood them. Oh, just, I feel like we're going backwards with folding phones, but again, I, I don't, uh, yeah. Oh, let's give it a go. On one hand, this is nice. A neatened up, lighter, thinner, faster version of the last phone. But every time I take it out my pocket, I also can't help but feel like Samsung hasn't fixed the fundamental issues here. And I'm not sure Samsung is even trying to fix the fundamental issues. So if you're coming from a non-folding phone, the first thing that you're gonna- in Not a psychopath. You notice is the crease. And it's getting to the point where now I am perplexed. I am perplexed how even six generations in, Samsung still hasn't managed to just fix this line going down the middle of their screen that companies like OnePlus have already proved can be done better with their Gen 1 folding phones. They just need to improve the hinge. It's the way this phone is pinching on the screen every time you close it. And it's only gonna get more noticeable the more- I look at that and I look, that's gonna break into a thousand pieces of a drop I know phones aren't designed to be rugged, uh, certainly for the iPhones. I mean, they're, you know, a lot of them have glass uh, back and I think a lot of them still do and a lot of them have glass on the front as well. So even though they are using a ceramic heart um, tempered glass, um, a lot of them, are, but I look at that, there's so many ways for that phone to break. I just folding phones, man. So the main rear cameras are good is what I would say if this was an $800 phone. Coming from the S24 Ultra, you really can feel the compromise, whether that's the more limited zoom range, the slightly less reliable focusing system, thanks to the lack of laser autofocus, or just the extra bit of graininess that creeps into dark photos and videos because of the smaller sensor here. Now, most people who go out and buy and use this phone probably won't know what they're missing out on, but that's my job, having used both of these phones to tell you that what you're getting here stings a little bit, especially considering that you can now get a brand new Galaxy S24 Ultra for like $1,000, while the Z Fold 6 will run you $1,900. What? $1,900 for that? And you get a crease? Two times the price, and it shouldn't be. See, it made complete sense to me that the first Galaxy Fold was significantly more expensive than a normal phone. I mean, a lot of R&D would have been required to build all the new parts and concepts from scratch for something that Samsung didn't expect to sell many units of. So they had to recoup the cost somehow, but that's not the case anymore. In the current market, this hinge and this folding screen these are standard parts. This phone almost definitely does not cost more than $200 extra to produce than this, but it's like eight to $900 more expensive to you for no other reason than that's become the default expectation for a fold and they know they can get away with it. Paying nine- I guess it is quite niche in themselves and um, yeah, I guess they've just kind of carved out their own market for the folding phone. I mean, I personally don't like folding phones, but people that do, I guess once you've got them, it's hard to like move away from them and they, I guess they are quite niche. Maybe they are trying to, what they lack in general user users purchasing the, the, the devices themselves, they make up for in obviously the, the price that they're charging. So the lack of users, but they're making good money. So why not make it rain? $100 for a phone, you would expect this to be the place where Samsung throws every single thing they got at the wall. But instead you get basically the same camera setup as not even the S24 Ultra, but the tiny base Galaxy S24. And your selfie cameras are even worse. The front one's not too bad. It takes 10 megapixel shots that make you look nice. It's standard Samsung fare. But the inside four megapixel camera makes you look sick. And I, I don't mean that as a compliment, I mean that literally. Shooting photos on this reminds me of shooting photos on the PlayStation Portable cam- There it is, that's the one we remember. Like 15 years ago. And I have heard a few people saying, well, this camera is designed for video calling, which is low quality anyway, so you're not gonna notice the resolution. But disagree. <laughs> the resolution is so low that you can't record 4K video with it, which I have found myself wanting to do a pretty decent amount. The camera seems to have a persistent faintness to it, presumably because of the extra layer of pixels on top of it. But also, since the whole appeal of a phone is to use it while it's open and use flex mode to prop the thing up to record videos, I don't think you can argue that this camera is only for video calls. At least 20% of the time, this is the camera that you're gonna want to use to shoot stuff. So the quality really matters. And it just makes you wonder, 
How did this happen? Samsung introduced this 4 megapixel under display camera on the Z Fold 3. It was terribly received then, and they've had the 4, the 5, and now the 6 to fix this. And so how have we ended up in a situation where this is the camera experience from a $2,000 2024 flagship grade enthusiast smartphone? Anyways, the front screen is wider than it was before, which is a nice improvement. It looks neater, they've got rid of all of the weird corner screen bezels, but it does still feel just a little bit like, like no man's land. It's very close to feeling like. Do you know what? Samsung now for me has gone, it's completely alien. I, I can't even remember the last Samsung phone I, 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 I owned. It's been that long. I am purely looking at this from the outside looking in. And and they look incredible. They look amazing. They do look good. Like they, I mean, how they've got screens on it seems to be on every facet of the phone, which um, looks technical to me. But again, um, I'm not sure how it would be in terms of usability. But it it looks impressive using a normal phone, and that's impressive considering what this is. But it's still just well a little worse in every way. A little bit too tall. A little bit too narrow. And a decent amount chunkier than a bar phone. And this whole structure. Holy smokes, you see the size of it? How thick is it? It's a bit of a thermal compromise too. It's not hugely surprising. I mean, when unfolded, you're having to light up a larger screen area, which creates more heat. And then when folded, this is a thicker slab, which makes it harder for that heat to escape. And this isn't some niche perk that- Do you say thermal slab? Interesting your gaming frame rates after prolonged periods of play. So many times when I have this phone open and it's like slightly warm outside, I'm noticing I can barely see my screen because it's dimming itself to try and prevent overheating. And two times it's actually gone one step further and refused to open my apps because of temperature. Just to clarify, I don't live on some subtropical paradise island basked in- This is a great re review, by the way. I mean, I, I don't think we He's doing well. This is a very, very thorough review, but it's very good. All day. I live in the UK. There is no reason I should be getting temperature warnings this severe with normal usage. Oh yeah, also, one of the things that I love about the Galaxy S24 Ultra is the battery life. That's one phone that I've never had to worry about. But this, with both a smaller battery capacity and a larger screen to power, it runs out anywhere between 15 and 25% faster. And that puts it very much in the anxiety zone. I mean, I do nowadays pretty much always carry around a power bank, so I'm not left stranded, but that's... Hell yeah, that power bank. Look at the size of it as well, huge. We do, we do sell them in various different sizes. Not that big though. Although we can get that big, only if you want to. Just made me realize how much more often I am reaching for power here. The flip does kind of fix this issue, but I'm getting to that phone. There was also quite a bit of emphasis that Samsung placed on the new AI features here. Yeah. Of course they do, it's 2024. But uh, are they any good? Some of them are. I'd say the vast majority do still fall into the fun to play with, but I won't use often category. I suppose the most useful kinds of AI features are the ones that allow you to do things that you already do, but better or faster, as opposed to the ones that just continuously act. I mean, being able to write an email like that would be pretty good. I'm not like, um, obviously on my iPhone and things like that, it's, it's, it's not ideal to sending iPhone, um, emails on iPhones, but it can be done. It just takes a little bit more time just to kind of, you know, you've got to zoom in, zoom out. And um, sometimes, you know, for example, if it's quite a lengthy email, it's like you've got to scroll to the top or scroll down to the bottom, kind of rejig it around. But that looks really useful. So imagine just like, and then you just have it normally on one side and then flip it out if you don't want to get detailed. But uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. More different options because, you know. If Galaxy Chocolate tastes good to you, wouldn't it be great if it did good for others too? By 2030, we commit to help one million people, including women, their families, and their communities thrive. Just a little drop of pleasure could create ripples of hope. Galaxy, your pleasure has promise. Ah, that's for crumpets, sweetheart. Ah, is it? The eyes are the first to go. Studies show our relationship with money is formed from the age of seven. To start a new one, talk to us today. You know, we're only human. There's only so many features that you're going to be able to integrate into your life. But this is why I love the idea of all of this automatic translation stuff. Like being able to have a WhatsApp chat across a usually impenetrable language barrier, but not actually having to think about the language barrier anymore. And also the new Smart Select tool. It's exactly what I was saying. It's making the kinds of things that you'd already be doing anyways, trying to fiddle around and select stuff, 
faster. I was also super excited about this new sketch to image, and there are moments where it all works the way you expect it, where you manage to perfectly place a one of a kind dinosaur within the scene of your day out in the park, and you feel like the protagonist in a superhero movie at the single moment where unlimited power. That is cool. That's a cool feature. I'm not sure when I'd use it. Again, I'm not, yeah. It's one of those that it's nice to have and nice to be able to be, do if you need it, but I'm not sure I mess around with cameras like that, but that's me personally. It's just been dropped in your lap. But I would say there's too many constraints right now. It seems like there's some sort of safety restriction when it comes to adding things to faces, which, I mean, it makes sense considering all the havoc that's been wrought by deepfakes lately. But then at the same time, faces are the main useful thing that you might want to add things to. And there's also other issues I'm bumping into, like draw smaller objects or draw objects closer together to generate. I think Samsung's just not ready for my big ideas yet. And do you know what using this feature consistently reminds me of? Just how silly it is that the one phone specifically designed to look and feel like a notepad does not come with a built-in S Pen like the S24 Ultra does. You know, the smaller of the two phones. So the only real remaining question is then, do the folding features make it all worth it? I feel like I've made it pretty clear at this point that you're giving up a lot to get these features. You're paying twice as much money, you're having to deal with a crease, a terrible underscreen camera, two displays with unorthodox aspect ratios, a compromised battery, and no S Pen. So should you? <laughs> well, as far as the physical act of being able to prop your phone up on flat surfaces, it feels cool. I've used it a fair bit to record time lapses of things happening or I remember I had um, I had something similar. I had a not similar in any way. I don't know why I said that, but it was a uh, um, an, a Vodafone GX10, and it was a foldable one. And I always like used to put it on the desk and or or like on my bed or whatever, and just fold it and pretend like I was using it like a laptop, you know, mini laptop. And this is it. This is here. We're here. Movies on a plane by sitting the phone up on my tray table, but it doesn't really matter. I would say you'll actually have a distinctly better experience just using a normal phone with a kickstand case, since you'll get a bigger... Oh, there's the plug. Yep, we do them. ...natural screen ratio, and also oftentimes with these cases, magnets for better wireless charging. Second plug, Mag uh, Mag MagSafe is available. I mean, there are things that do uniquely utilize the display on this phone. The taskbar, for starters, is an amazing addition. This whole one tap to instantly be in another app is a genuinely ungimmicky efficiency improvement that you just can't have on a smaller phone. But ultimately, it's not for me. You might know that I spent a few months trying to use an iPad as my main computer. And the whole reason that failed was simply because of the mobile operating system. Same thing here. While it is impressive how much this thing can do for a phone, the truth is that for most people, this phone is still a little bit too fiddly and not quite efficient enough to be a good main computer, which makes it hard to justify given that for this price, you can actually buy a good equivalently performing flagship phone and still have the money left over for a great laptop. So I thought that is wild. You could buy you could buy a phone and a laptop for the price of this foldable phone. Ooh. Wow. If you're looking at buying this, please make absolute sure that these specific folding features are things that you'll definitely use. Because if you splurge on a fold and all you end up doing is playing Candy Crush but either squeezed or stretched, that will be a poor purchase decision. Mm. I just feel like these Z Folds are a little bit stuck. Not that many people are buying them, so Samsung seems to have lost the drive to actually fix the fundamental compromises, which in turn makes them persistently hard to recommend outside of their niche. The Flip 6, though, is actually very different. And in my opinion, a phone that makes more... I love that transition. That was brilliant. That was a, that was a good, that was smooth. If the Fold is the insecure teenager trying desperately to be something they're not, the Flip is its eccentric sibling, who, sure, they're a little bit odd, but they understand who they're trying to be. Through many years of bulking up the specs on these phones, I'd say Samsung's now got to a stage where the Galaxy Z Flip 6 is basically a flagship Galaxy S24 Plus that costs one to two hundred dollars more, but folds in half. And that isn't pointless. It's partly just a bit of fun, which doesn't hurt in an era where everyone's always saying that smartphones have peaked. I can't lie, if Samsung ever gave you the option to have their top-end ultra phones also fold without any compromises, i take it in a heartbeat. And they've really dialed into that fun with all the unique front screen customization and funky case options. And this new uh, photo ambient feature, which overlays real weather effects onto photos that you've taken. It is pretty good. Like, it does look, it, I get it, it does look a bit of fun. And that's kind of where it ends for me. <laughs> Very pointless, but brings me joy. It's got. Oh.
Polly cinched it. Alf cinched it. The Pollock family cinched it. <coughs> Becky cinched it with a 14-day money-back guarantee. I cinched it. With so many great reasons to buy it. The nation aren't just nailing it, they're cinching it. It's got a potential lifestyle benefit, because unlike the front of the Z Fold 6, which is basically just a slightly less comfortable phone, the front of the Flip 6 it has a very clearly distinct feature set to the main screen. This is much more like having a smartphone and then a completely separate smartwatch, as opposed to this, which is like a smartphone and then a slightly worse smartphone. And when I switched over to the Z Flip 5 last year, I did find that the physical barrier to go from this smartwatch stage to the smartphone stage actually did make me use my phone less. And then you do lose the three times telephoto camera that the S24 Plus has. So you only get a main and an ultra wide. But I would actually say that it makes up for it with selfies. See, unlike the Fold, which can use its high-end rear cameras. It's quite, I mean, it's quite, it looks, it looks quite compact and still functional at the same time. And it kind of looks like a little Tamagotchi or something, you know, it's like really handheld, it's not big. It, it's, it's kind of got that, those endearing features. Take selfies. Here, that's actually the default way to take selfies. If you want to take good selfies on the Fold, you have to unfold, open the camera, flip that camera, tap the cover screen preview button, physically turn the phone over, being careful not to swipe anything on screen, and then take your shot before closing it all back up again. Here, you just double tap the power button and then tap the screen. It's not a perfect system because then at the same time, anytime you want to take a photo of what's in front of you, you do have to manually flip the phone open. But the point is, this phone is a unique proposition that makes it distinct and useful for more than 1% of the population. Now, there are a few things that I would say are compromised, like you still have to deal with the crease, but for whatever- The crease is back. That is just such, that would just put me right off. And it is significantly less noticeable on this flip than it is the Fold. The buttons are a little high up when the phone's open. And I do feel like they could quite easily shove them down and they'd still work fine in both unfolded and folded states. The screen is a little bit tall. Not as tall as the cover screen on the Fold, but still taller than I'd like. And it's only got a 1080p resolution as opposed to the Quad HD that you get on their flat flagships. But I think that's okay. I keep my phone on 1080p anyways for battery life and temperature reasons. And it's got the same chip as the temperature reasons. I promise. 24 Ultra, same RAM, same base storage, same wireless charging speeds. And yet the battery capacity is smaller too. Just like the Fold also has a smaller battery than normal bar phones. But unlike the Fold, which is like a normal phone that extends into a big tablet, this is a normal phone that folds into something half that size, which means you save a lot of battery compared to a normal phone and you end up with something very close to that of an S24 Plus. So my through line for this phone is very much that six generations in, you still have to make compromises for a phone that folds. If all you want is the best bang for your buck, it isn't this. And to be honest, it never will be this. However, if you just really like the idea of a folding phone, then you're giving up surprisingly little to get it here. And you also scoop up a couple of little perks while you're at it too. So I had a funny situation a couple of weeks ago. I was stuck in a plane while England was in the Euros football final, which by the way, the men's team has never won. So this was a big deal. And it felt like every single person on that flight wanted to do one thing and one thing only, find a way to stream the game. But they couldn't. The football was being streamed for free in the UK on BBC iPlayer. But you know, when you're flying 40,000 feet above the Atlantic Ocean, your phone is gonna know that. And the app will refuse to play due to geographic license restrictions. I could literally see the lady in front of me searching live for the best VPN deals on this flight. So you can imagine how desperately, desperately I wanted to grab her and tell her that I had it. It's this, Surfshark VPN. We pulled it up, we switched our location to the UK, and we managed to watch England fudge the finals once more live, after which we kind of wish we hadn't bothered. But the point is, I'm consistently glad that I have this subscription. And given that with the code BOSS, you can now get it for just $2.09 a month, with a 30-day money-back guarantee for an unlimited number of users with four extra months for free, it's a bit of a no-brainer. 100% There it is, a bit of uh, advertising at the end there. Guys, that was the Samsung Review live, uh, re live reaction. Um, yeah, look, I'm, I've, I never, uh, I've never, like I said, I've not owned a Samsung phone in some time. It's, uh, I've always kind of been Apple, which is because it's just easier and I don't use the device to the extent of which I should be using them. Um, I use it just for very basic, you know, browsing, emails, phone call, WhatsApp, um, 
you know, photos to an extent, but, um, you know, I've got like another camera that I use for my, my photos and things like that. So, um, yeah, this Samsung looks like it's going to be a good one for sure. I mean, the foldable ones, they, look, they, they do look a bit of fun. They do look like a bit of fun, but that's probably where it ends for me. But, uh, but that's been my review. Thanks, guys.